Hello and welcome to this learning path, which has been designed to help you prepare and pass the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Exam version SAA C02, which was released by AWS on the 23rd of March 2020. Throughout this learning path, you will be guided via our courses, our hands-on labs, including some lab challenges, blog posts, webinars, and a preparation exam at the end, all of which are focused on areas that will be assessed within the exam. As defined in the exam blueprint, which can be found here, the exam has been designed for individuals within a solutions architect role, which will verify and validate their knowledge within this area by effectively demonstrating their ability to architect solutions using best practice design principles in a secure and robust way. The questions within the exam are multiple choice, requiring you to select either a single or multiple answers for each question. And the scoring is based out of 1,000, with a minimum passing score of 720, which is 72%. Now, the exam is split into four different domains that you'll be assessed against, each carrying a different percentage weighting. These are identified as Domain 1, Design Resilient Architectures, which accounts for 30%. Domain 2, Design High Performing Architectures, which accounts for 28%. Domain 3, Design Secure Applications and Architectures, which accounts for 24%. And Domain 4, Design Cost Optimized Architectures, which accounts for 18%. So let me now run through how we approach each of these domains within the content within this learning path. In this first domain, Design Resilient Architectures, you'll be assessed on your knowledge of how to design a multi-tier architecture and ensure such solutions are highly available and fault tolerant. In addition to this, you must show an understanding of the benefits of decoupled and event-driven architectures. Storage also plays an important part in this domain, and you are required to demonstrate your awareness of resilient storage capabilities in your architecture. With this in mind, you'll be introduced to the AWS Global Infrastructure, providing you with a foundation of how the underlying architecture is pieced together on a global scale. We shall discuss how to implement a multi-tier architecture within a VPC, using multiple subnets and networking components, amongst other features and services. You will also be introduced to Amazon Route 53 and Amazon CloudFront, and also some common disaster recovery and business continuity strategies. You will learn the differences between decoupled and event-driven architectures, and some of the services that allow you to implement such solutions, such as the Amazon Simple Notification Service, the Amazon Simple Queue Service, Amazon Kinesis, and AWS Lambda. From a storage perspective, you will gain a deeper understanding of storage services and how they can be used to help maintain your data from a resiliency point of view, including Amazon S3, AWS Storage Gateway, and Amazon EFS, to name but a few. Looking at domain two, you must understand how to design high-performing architectures across the compute, storage, networking, and database categories. The key areas of focus here is to ensure that you know which services to use and configure to implement elastic and scalable solutions for compute workloads. So we will cover the configuration of auto-scaling and application and network load balancers, in addition to services such as Amazon EC2, Amazon Elastic Container Service, and AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Again, you'll be assessed on your AWS storage service knowledge, but this time from a high performance and scalable side of things. We'll look deeper at Amazon EFS and its configuration, plus an insight into additional features within Amazon S3. From a network standpoint, you need to be able to demonstrate you have a good knowledge of how to architect infrastructure that can support your workload effectively. So I'll focus on many of the VPC networking components that can help you to do this, from the fundamentals of the VPC itself, including subnets, Elastic Network Interfaces, and the Elastic Network Adapter, to security controls and considerations, including network access control lists, security groups, NAT gateways and bastion hosts, plus connectivity options such as VPC endpoints, virtual private networks, direct connect, transit gateway, and the AWS Global Accelerator. The final component on domain two will test your awareness and knowledge of database performance and what you can implement to help you manage workloads across your databases. We introduce you to many of the different database services to give you a foundation knowledge of the different services available, before honing in on some of the performance options available, including high availability with Amazon RDS using multi-AZ features, in addition to high availability options across Amazon DynamoDB and Amazon Aurora. You'll also be introduced to the Amazon DynamoDB Accelerator, known as DAX, to boost your database performance tenfold using cached clusters. 
Domain 3 for me personally is probably the most interesting content, but that's because I love the security aspect of AWS. You'll be assessed on three main points across this domain. You'll need to know how to design secure access to AWS and its resources within it. You will have to understand how to design secure application tiers and finally be able to recommend and select the most appropriate security services and features to protect your data. We have content to help you understand all of these areas and elements and one of the main services that you'll need to know and be familiar with is AWS Identity and Access Management known as IAM. So we cover this in some detail which also covers federated access. You'll also be introduced to Amazon Cognito as well as AWS organizations, in particular the service control policies that this service offers. From an application security standpoint, we focus on the AWS Web Application Firewall with an introduction to Firewall Manager and Shield. Login is also a crucial element of application security and so you'll learn how to enable login and use it to your advantage from a security standpoint. You will understand how services such as AWS Config and AWS CloudTrail can also be used to help you audit, monitor and evaluate your infrastructure for security issues and incidents to help you resolve threats quicker and more effectively. From a data security perspective, you will learn how to protect your data using the AWS Key Management Service, known as KMS, to encrypt your data across multiple services, in addition to learning how to manage and configure multiple encryption mechanisms used by Amazon S3. The final domain of the certification looks at cost optimization across your architecture. So it's important to understand the different costing metrics to different services and how you can optimize their configurations. Here we spend time looking at the different costs associated with AWS storage services to ensure you understand the full spectrum of price points associated with these, such as service class or tiers, using specific management elements of a service, for example, provision throughput in EFS or S3 replication time control, using different types of requests, data retrieval and data transfer, replication and more. You'll be introduced to compute savings plans and reserved instances and how these can be optimized to save you money across your EC2 fleets. And finally, a review of some of the cost optimization features and best practices when designing a cost optimized network architecture. Okay, so now you have an understanding of what's involved, let's get you prepped and ready to tackle this certification. And if you have any questions throughout this learning path, please feel free to reach out to us here by sending an email to support at cloudacademy.com. Okay, let's get started.